In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is the first Sunday of Lent, which means I'm going to lose five pounds. <laughs> it's easy for us to misunderstand what Lent is about. It's very easy for us to uh, make it our own thing. And just as we read it in the first reading um, in Isaiah, the people, the Israelites, are misunderstanding what Lent, or not Lent, but what fasting is all about. It's very easy for them to get it wrong as well. And so God is speaking to them about what fasting, what he wants, what fasting is really all about. And God points out that what is wrong about their fasting, and he says, I mean, it's a different translation, but he says, Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure. Um, in, the, in the reading that we read, it says, you make it, you make it up to you. you. Somehow it's, you make it your own thing. It becomes about you rather than about God. And fasting, for us, we can fall into that same temptation. We can make fasting about us. And how do we do that? Well, the temptation is to look at fasting or to look at Lent as like a challenge where I'm going to prove to God or I'm going to prove to people or to myself that I'm strong and that I can do this and that I can, you know, uh, I have this willpower. Or I can prove to God how, um, how good I really am so that He can love me more. Or we can make Lent a diet plan. I know that's a big temptation for a lot of people. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to fast, um, but I'm really looking forward to losing that weight. And while losing weight uh, usually is a sign that you're doing fasting the right way, <laughs> it's not the point. The point, the point that we, or the goal that we must have is to make this about God rather than about ourselves. So what does God say is the, the correct fast? What, what is the fasting that he chooses? And he says, this is the fast that I choose. God says, is this not the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Yoke is usually, is, is usually the sign of sin. It's something heavy. So this is what he wants for us. So what do we want from Lent? Do we have a goal in Lent? Usually... We think of all the things that we want to give up, but we don't think about what is that going to get me? Where is that going to get me? Where is that taking me? What is my goal? So do we have a goal? What is the goal? What is the general goal? Like I said, God wants to loosen the bonds of wickedness, sin. So the, really the goal, the general goal, whatever it may be, whatever the different ways that we might choose, it's going to look differently for all of us. But I think the main goal is to make us, is to make us more, more selfless rather than selfish. Is to leave our selfish ways and become more selfless so that we can receive God. We can have God in, in, a, in a more full way. So whatever it may be, for you and I, it's going to be different. But the, the main goal that all of us should have in our hearts and our minds is to empty ourselves. It's kind of like a detox. A letting go, a detox of all the different things that are binding me down, keeping me selfish. And in, and in doing that, I'm not able to receive more of God. I'm not able to have God in, in, in His fullness. So, in the Gospel, in, in the first reading, we see God is telling us what fasting is not. And then He tells us what it is. And then Jesus actually does it. So God not only shows us and tells us, but He actually does it Himself through Jesus. And Jesus is not, obviously, is Jesus in need of, of fasting? Does he need to be cleansed from sin? No. Right? We are in need of it. And that's why Jesus does this. So Jesus receives the Holy Spirit. Just before this, it says Jesus receives the Holy Spirit. But instead of going out and, and doing all these wonderful works, which you would think he would do, what does he do? 
he goes into the desert to be tempted, it says. And why does he do this? Because Jesus, in his humanity, wants to be completely, he wants to empty himself completely, emptying of himself completely, and be completely dependent on his Father. So, the devil comes to Jesus in his weakness. It says, he fasts 40 days and 40 nights, and at the end, or towards the end, he gets hungry. And that's when the devil comes. The devil comes to Jesus in his weakness, at that weak point. So, do you and I know our weak point? Because the devil does the same thing to us. He uses the weak point, and he, and he, and he, he continues to use that same weak point to make us fall, to hold us down, to bind us down, so that we are not able to receive or to be filled with God. So the devil tempts Jesus in, in three, three ways. But the one that I, I want to focus on the most because I feel like we talk about or we do the most is the first one. The devil tempts Jesus with bread. And bread is not just, just um, it's usually, it symbolizes or signifies anything material, anything uh, on the material or physical level. So <clears throat> he tempts him at that point with food because Jesus is hungry. And it's the, same, it's the same temptation for us. I mean, we might not be always, we might not all be uh, struggling with uh, overeating or, or tempted with food, but we're all tempted on a physical level. We're tempted to fill ourselves on a physical level because we're physical human beings. It's very easy for us to do that. So, what are we filling ourselves with? What, is, what, is that, what are those things in our lives? What are those weak points in our lives that we're filling ourselves with that are binding us? I want to talk about one thing that is really, really taking over. The physical thing is our phones. And our phones are a good thing. Phones are a good thing. They're a great gift. Technology is a great gift. But how much is our phone binding us down from loving other people, from loving God, from being present to other people and being present to God? How much is social media? How much time can you... Just think to yourself, how much time do I spend on social media? And if I were to de get, take half of that time, or all of that time, and gave it to God, how different my life would actually be. If we're honest with ourselves, we're probably not checking our Facebook or our Instagram only once a day. If anything, we're probably checking it numerous times a day, and that's it's okay. But I think that it's binding us. It's binding us from being present to God in a real way. So that's one thing that you can consider if that's a struggle in your life. That's one thing that you consider. You can con consider, and you can do that in many various ways. You don't have to give it all up completely. Maybe you can just give up Instagram if you have Instagram and Facebook. Or maybe you could say to yourself, I'm only going to check it once a day. It could be food. A lot of people give up sweets because you have a sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth. I give up sweets all the time. But I don't, I don't usually give up sweets as my main fast. Usually that's like a side thing. Because I think you and I, we can think to ourselves, well, if I give up chocolate, if I give up sweets, you know, I'm, um, I'm giving up something. I'm, I'm giving up something for God. And yes, we are giving up something for God, right? We do need to give up something. But it's not that God needs our sacrifice. God is not in need of our sacrifice. We're in need of the sacrifice. We're in need of, and the sacrifice, what does it do? It cleanses us, like I said. It unbinds us. So whatever your weak point may be, Another weak point may be um, using bad language, swearing, gossiping. And one thing that uh, I, I was talking to a friend and, and they gave me this idea, that if you struggle with gossiping, you struggle with swearing, you struggle with bad language, what you could do is, you could take $50 and Take them, make them singles, keep them in your room, 
that every time that you swear or you gossip or you do you say or do something that you don't want to do you put that dollar in like a piggy bank or something and then you give it to charity at the end it's tough but how much do we really want more of god how, how, how far are we willing to go? I mean, sweets is a good thing. Sacrificing sweets is a good thing. Sacrificing, you know, um, chocolate or whatever it may be is a good thing. The sacrifice is a good thing. But if I'm not doing it with the goal to have more of God, then it's not going to get me very far. It's almost, I don't want to say it is pointless, but it can be pointless. Depending on where our goal is. What do we really, really want? Do I want to let go of sinful ways so that I can receive more of God? And when I say this, it doesn't mean that it's completely dependent on us. God gives us His Holy Spirit through, through the new nature, like, like St. Paul says in the, in the second reading. He says, we've been given a new nature, which means we've been given the Holy Spirit. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us. So whatever challenge that we want to give ourselves... We have to give it to Jesus first and say, Jesus, this is my weak point. This is what's binding me away from you. This is what I want to give you. I need your spirit to do that. I want your spirit to do that. We already have the spirit. We've already been given that spirit. The Holy Spirit's already living inside of us. And if we fail, we got to get back up and continue on. I hear so many people say, I don't like Lent because I always end up failing halfway through. If you fail, get back up and continue. You had chocolate or you checked your Facebook. Start over the next day. Tomorrow's a new day. So the devil wants to discourage us all the time because he wants to make it about us. He wants us to focus on ourselves. And like I said, the goal is Jesus. The goal is to receive more of Jesus. We're all thirsting for Jesus. We're all thirsting for, for more of Him. So you and I, look at, our, look at our weak points as we prepare for tomorrow. Or, I mean, really, it starts at midnight tonight. So look at that weak point. What is that weak point in my life? Am I willing to let go of that weak point? Do I want to let go of that weak point so that I can receive more of Jesus, so I can be filled with Jesus and then in turn give Him to others? God bless you.